everyone, and thanks for joining us once again in Transforming the World Through Reflections. Today, I'm accompanied by one of my dearest friends, Jackie Ponce. So the flavor of Ecuador is in the house. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's the first time we see each other in person since this pandemic. So finally, we got to hug again. Finally. I'm finally. Been missing you so I much. Know, me yes. too. Well, Jackie is a community activist, community leader, an advocate. Everything that she can do to support families in schools, in the neighborhoods here in Santa Clarita Valley, where we both work. We met because of uh, work we, we did with artists. And that led to this journey mm -hmm. of collaboration in support of families. And so today we're going to have the opportunity to reflect on how the pandemic transformed that experience of advocacy in the community. So shall we jump in? Yes, Vamos. let's go for it. <laughs> yes. How are you doing? Ah, I'm doing great. It's, I'm really happy, full of joy in seeing you here. I mean, being back, yes. being back together. Yeah. I just love that. Me too. And I'm so happy that you're touching all this topics because yeah that's my passion that's mm -hmm. my love that's mm -hmm. how we met because that's we have that love for it that's it el sabor el sabor el sabor <laughs> this is a spanglish one <laughs> <laughs> so so let's let's talk about that you know during this experience of the pandemic what did you notice in that process of you know continuing this advocacy work mm -hmm. how did you do it given that you know we were all impacted by uh, having to be distanced from each other uh, initially with a severe quarantine eventually a less severe quarantine but still it created distance how was your work different in those circumstances yeah it, it was really um first it was really hard on 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 your own life because I mean, you feel you felt the imp impact in, in you, in your life, and being an advocate and being having that love to help the community. Uh, I was noticing on me first. I'm like, okay, I need to be strong in order to continue helping. So first was adapting or or making changes into my own life to keep on going. Mm -hmm. And once I like established my own self secureness, I I mean. I kept on going to the community. Either mostly it was through phone calls or through because the community has my cell phone number <laughs> after I left <laughs> after I left the school. I mean, which I'm glad that they have it because yes. they either we, we we just call it. I mean, make the chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody calls somebody. Oh, do you have Jackie's? Or or they either do it through social media. They they find a way how to contact me, and. Uh, in my case, having the heart for the community, la familia, for mm -hmm. the family, because for me, the community is la fa family. Mm -hmm. I, I was like taking by, I mean, just to market or just on the street, just by seeing how are you guys coping? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How are the kids? Because I noticed it a lot among the kids. Yes. The, the, the fear, a lot, a lot of fear. And in the community, I can really tell that that was the hardest part the fear of coming out even from the apartments, mm -hmm. the fear of how they, how, what do they need to tell the kids? How are they gonna let them know? So that, that was really hard for them. So I started basically uh, just saying, okay guys, let's just talk. Let's just, keep, let's just make it a phone call or, or just send me a message if you want. I mean, just let me know. I mean, or sometimes I would just call somebody that knows somebody else and mm -hmm. say, hey, I'm just checking. How is everybody? Right. Uh, supposedly in the Valle del Loro. How is everybody? How is everyone? Or just put it in the social media. Yes. How is everyone and this and this? Mm -hmm. And they will either message me or, or do that sort of thing. Then they started opening up. Jackie, we're going through this hard part in the school because it was hard. I mean, yeah, it was great that the schools gave the laptops, the, the library did a great job. I mean, everybody was doing really good in trying to cope with it. But it was hard for the parents because they're not, they don't have the technology. They didn't know how to handle how any to of that, it. how mm -hmm. to use it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and they were like, <laughs> it was funny because sometimes they, I would, they would just say, here, I have this, and I don't know what to do with it. And they were just like, <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, good. Now you can touch it. Let's open it up. Yes. Let's, let, let's experience. Let's just do it. Little, little by, by little. little. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Little by little. And then, because at the same time, they say, how am I going to be checking the kid through a computer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Don't worry. Let's, let's just. Mm -hmm. And that's when you learn, actually, to do a lot of the deep breathings. Mm -hmm. Just stop for a while. Don't rush. There's no rush. Let's just take your time. Let's just go for a walk. And they're like, for a walk? Yes, let's go for a walk. Let's look for nature. Let's just go look a little bit for that. It's not going to happen anything over there. Come on, let's just walk. Take deep breaths. Yeah. And yeah. that, that I mean, now that you're asking and reflecting on that, it's like, oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's yes, we went through the challenge, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's good. It's good. Some good things came out of it. Thank you for bringing up the work of schools and libraries providing technology that many people didn't have because that's that's one of the the essential things in this pandemic uh, to notice how many people did not have access to the technology needed to make these transitions so that the work uh, the school all these daily routines that require communication had to be done via computers, mm -hmm. being on screen. And a lot of people didn't have it. So all these inequities were, you know, for sure, clearly seen in the pandemic. Thankfully, places like schools and libraries jumped in to support mm -hmm. those who don't have mm -hmm. the technology. And, and you being involved in the community, supporting parents in learning how to use technology that they didn't have before so quite the eye-opener this pandemic definitely quite the eye-opener and then like you said you know uh to learn something new to learn something new in the middle of crisis it wasn't easy no nope. it wasn't easy it really was not so it, it's interesting to hear you talking about those nature walks as a way to help them decompress while learning something new. Such a Jackie moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did know? it at school. Mm -hmm. The kids, I mean, whenever they got in trouble, mm -hmm. it was funny because, I mean, that's part of, just like you say, that's part of me. I just go and walk and say, okay, let's, yeah, let's yeah. just give it out there. Yeah. But I didn't know that influence so much like the kids. Right. I remember when, when I was at school, the kids will say, th they will even tell the teacher, I need to talk to Miss Jackie. And they go, what for? They're like, the teachers will call me. They want to go and talk with you. I'm like, okay, send them over. Mm -hmm. and they, or they either got in trouble. Oh, he got in trouble. I'm like, okay, send him over. Mm -hmm. And they, the kids will say, Miss Jackie, can we go for a walk? I'm like okay, let's go. Let's go for the walk. Yeah, but it, it's it's nice because it's the the breathing, the the walking, it, the just acknowledging the whole movement. Yes, and then okay, what was the challenge? Yes, what did it go through? Yes, what what did you feel? Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's several. It's once you feel that, let it let go and let empty. Okay, now let's fill it up. What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. How are we going to work? To catch perspective. Yeah. To catch perspective. You know, it's interesting because uh, for those of us who, who work in the psychotherapy field, we have found it helpful, maybe even more than prior to the pandemic, to have sessions that include going for a walk. How beautiful. You know? Uh, we've known for a long time the power of having a therapy session while going for a walk. But there's something about it now. And perhaps because we were apart for so long. You know? Yeah. It just really amplifies perspective. And it richly adds to the conversation. So I can see how the families you were working with, you know, in the middle of the, you know, hardest part of the crisis 
really benefited from those walks yeah. with a mask, you know, and then get back to learning how to use this technology that they urgently needed to learn how to use. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, it's it's really it's really it's really nice to see a little right now. Mm -hmm. Because I mean seeing their faces at the beginning of the fear, because you could see the fear, the fear in everything, and now seeing them and and making them aware. I mean, look what a growth. Because I mean, when when I talk with them, I mean, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was with uh, some mummies, and it, and they were we were actually talking about school because I was helping them in IEPs and different things, mm -hmm. and I was telling them, I said, you know what, just bite your back, look how wonderful you've done, you didn't know how to even use it, and now and you now. are texting the teacher, you are calling the school, texting the teacher, you are handling the IEP, look how wonderful is that, right? That is. That is wonderful. And it adds to someone's sense of confidence. You know, the work you were doing before the pandemic with these same families in these same communities definitely included supporting them in developing a sense of confidence, especially those who are immigrants mm -hmm. and need to learn how to navigate life in this country. So that's another layer in this development of a sense of confidence mm -hmm. to take action, to take initiative, to resolve certain issues that come with, you know, life in a, in a new environment. And so I can see how this new learning could add to that confidence they were building in their work with you. Yes. You know, so it's, it's nice. To, those things are nice to see. Yeah, it's it's actually improving the tools mm -hmm. in, in in the journey of life. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how I will call it, and that's what I always say. Yeah. Let's just keep on looking for more tools because yeah. they're there. They're it's there. A, it's a matter of just let's look, let's feel, let's mm -hmm. grab it and absorb it. Keep it working, practice because everything is practice. Right. And and after that, just to me celebrate because you already got something new. Mm -hmm. And it's true, just like you're saying. Uh, I mean, being an immigrant, it's 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 so hard, and and acknowledging and going through all of this. Sometimes it's for them. It's like the world it comes down, and I'm glad. I'm glad that I can be there to tell you the truth. Because I mean, just like I mentioned, I mean, for me they're my family, and just being able to 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 get that phone call to be there to 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 make teach them how to see things in a different perspective yeah that for me is just amazing that for me is like ah oh, i mean just seeing their faces yes. i mean just by seeing their faces for me it's like ah yes we did it and and they know that i'm like that i'm like yeah they, I mean, they I celebrated they the moment <laughs> they know that you're cheering them on and and that's the thing that you know makes that bond so strong so i'm not surprised that they tried to find ways to reach you even when we were in quarantine yes you know um it's amazing yes. and something that you talk about a lot is the resilience mm -hmm. and how it it's part of what moves people forward particularly people who have a long journey even before coming to the u.s of just going 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 in order to survive mm -hmm. you know and then that matched up with someone as passionate as you in in advocacy hopefully stirs up their own passion to do what they love yes and and actually that's what i'm always reinforcing to look for that passion mm -hmm. uh, because i totally understand the amount of work that they give is is just amazing i mean they I can see like the daddies, uh, all the work that they do. I mean, they do construction, painting, gardening. It, it's it's a lot of hands on, a and lot. then and then mommies, it w they're either having like a part time or do something with the cleaning houses, doing doing something, plus the house, plus the children. So I mean, I, I always said, you know what, guys, take your time. Take your time to acknowledge each one of you. Mm -hmm. Take your time to just. Probably, I mean, just ask yourself, how are you doing? Or just go out, kick a ball. Mm -hmm. Just have an ice cream. I mean, take your own time because, yeah, it's true. Yes, you're working to make money to keep it going. 
But take your time too. I mean, to to acknowledge each one of you, because sometimes right. they're just so focused and yeah. just like you're saying in the work, in the money, and how they do. I'm like, no, let it be. right now. As a matter of fact, it's 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 interesting. It came out another family that she's been pushing. I'm the one who's doing this, and I'm the one who's doing that, and I'm like. Why don't we just give some time and let's acknowledge all the things that he's doing? And she's like, let's let's just think. Put put yourself in into what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I didn't realize that. I'm like, yeah. He he goes what at six o'clock and comes at five o'clock, and you're asking him to get dressed and take the kid to the park. I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she's like, I didn't realize that. I'm like, okay, let's just acknowledge him, him. I mean, and let him know, you know what? Thank you for what you're doing. Let's see how we can do something together, together. for our children. Yeah. And it's wonderful because right now they're going to the park every afternoon. <laughs> see? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, they say what you appreciate appreciates. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's so, so sweet that you invite these parents in the middle of their agitation to just appreciate the power of the pause yes we see so much more when we pause right definitely my goodness and this pandemic in many ways was quite a quite a pause a grand pause for many of us to to reflect on on life in new ways yes in new ways how did that show up for you um these reflections that came as a result of of uh, this pandemic pause. I actually, uh, which is good, the pause, mm -hmm. because I acknowledge it more, mm -hmm. and and that for me, it's it's uh, I live more in that. I take times for that pause more. Mm. I take more time for the silence to reflect what I'm doing, where is it going, mm -hmm. how how I can keep contributing, because I'm always, I always ask God, guide me, guide me to please, with the knowledge to keep on helping more the community. Because for me, that that's my service. Yes, That's the way to serve, I mean, the community, and, and of course the children, the safety of the children. So for me, pause and silence is actually the key. And that, and that the pandemic actually contributed a lot to that. It sure because, did. I mean, it, it got to that, let's sit okay let's take a deep breath mm -hmm. let's be grateful hey you're still here i woke up such a person's still here i mean we we are here i can still go out and continue hoping and they continue make a phone hoping. call yeah mm -hmm. they make a phone call and i'm going right there okay let's just take different protection measures and this safety guidelines okay but let's keep on doing mm -hmm. let's let's keep on going mm -hmm. and and that's the way that I see it, like what other tools gave us yes. the resilience, finding out how strong we are. Oh, I mean, when, when, I, when, me I about see, it. when I see it prior and through and now I'm like, wow, we're incredible human beings. We're amazing. Crisis reveals a lot. Oh, Crisis definitely. reveals a lot. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. Now, something that in the process of revealing um, was very obvious is how much we have avoided addressing. And so being, being at a standstill, as they say, because of the quarantine, you know, people were throbbing because of all the stuff that was coming up that that was finally going to have some attention. Mm -hmm. You can't run anymore. So that, for many people, was the road to discovering their strengths, uh, the road to discovering resources for support, to navigate all these things that were coming up that were there for a long time, but just finally getting attention. And that's where people like Jackie come in, you know, in the role of advocating for wellness. Yeah. So I'm wondering what situations you can recall where you perhaps were advocating in new ways 
from the ways you did prior to the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I did several of those. Mm -hmm. The one of the things that I mainly focused was like give the opportunity for unity. Mm. Because uh, prior to that, because of the the enclosure and everything, some of them got really upset because oh now we're together i can i can stand this person <laughs> i heard many <laughs> stories like that <laughs> uh -huh. and i'm like huh so maybe sometimes go to the park and then go back together why don't you just chat guys and they were like what are we going to be talking about and i was like wow that was a big eye opener mm -hmm. and 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 it was funny because i'm like okay let's start looking for topics how was your day what did you guys do what are you planning to do together why don't you just read a story what about and because th those are topics that i really really love and i used to do that with my with my kids at school talk about how was your childhood mm -hmm. when something happened back at home how did you do it how did you handle it and you know what this is going to be a great experience for the kids because they don't know what you went through as in the childhood mm -hmm. this is a new opportunity so i i like that part of the unity the conversation the communication finding out about more about each other because we we have families as, as you know as latinos i mean we have the little ones and then we have the teens and then we have the ones that go to college the daddy that's working right so it's different ways of thinking and multi-generational households totally so so very common in our communities exactly yes. and for them that's that's a hard one mm -hmm. because they're like these are these are kids that are already born and raised here which for them they they come from a different fields uh, culture and everything and i'm like yeah but take the richness out of that Mm. because because that's that's rich we, we come from a lot of richness of culture yes. i'm like when you cook teach them mm -hmm. if you don't want to teach them how to cook but teach them where did this plate came from mm -hmm. i mean that's the way that i learned from the from the community mm -hmm. i mean i learned here how to eat all this different oh my gosh this <laughs> wonderful food from everywhere yes. which i enjoyed and yes. they were like really jackie i'm like well yeah you guys know i'm not i'm not from mexico but i enjoy so much any any yeah. because i mean right now it's mexican then it's nicaraguense then it's salvadorian yes. and I, mean, and I mean and then we have the from all other cultures too i mean for me that's richness yes let's enjoy that yes and they were like we never thought of that oh you see Maybe it's because I'm not from there. That's why I see mm -hmm. all, all that magnificence and richness, flavor. And that's the other thing that I said. And at the same time, while you're talking all of that, you're teaching the little ones more vocabulary. Right, right. More vocabulary. As they learn about the history of, of the, the foods from their countries of origin. Right? And that, wow, it, it's, it's so related to the work that, that I have watched you do over the years you know where you support families in definitely learning to adapt to life in this mm -hmm. country and at the same time honor the cultural history that they bring yes you know so it sounds like in the pandemic there was yet another reason to yeah. do that to do that you know this reminds me of the work from years ago with one of our dear friends, artists in the community, Evelyn Serrano. Yep. Cubana. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, when, uh, ¿verdad? <laughs> when she led Nomad Lab mm -hmm. in Valle del Oro, we had gardening, we had art, we had uh, meetings with the parents, with the grandparents, yeah. with the children. And, you know, these are the things that build community. Yeah. It they was build community. So I am impressed that you found ways to do similar things remotely <laughs> during the pandemic. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, th I think it's part of the love. It's part of the love, definitely, because, I mean, I, I always say, w how did I come up? How did they come up with this? I'm like, ah, th that's more. That's more than me. It, I guess it's got to be the love for, for, for doing what I do. Yes. And that's what I always encourage when, when I talk to kids. I'm like, 
guys, look for things that you love mm -hmm. because you have it inside of you. Mm -hmm. You have it in. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, we do need to do all the things that school teaches you, but right there, there's love in there. Yeah. There's look for that. Yeah. And and it's, it's so cute because when, when you talk to the kids like that and they're like, <gasps> their eyes get right wide open and they start like like yeah. searching and yeah. i'm like i love that <laughs> they feel heard yep and you know yep. we all need that and so in so many ways we contribute to a child's uh sense of security you know uh you talk about how children participate in in all these activities leading activities so you know their leadership skills starting early and walking with them into adulthood you know, and these are the these are the adults that now call you. I mean, I'm thinking of some of the kids we work we worked with. Right. Some are now teenagers, but quite a few are adults now. Where does time go? Yes. Right. Yes. My it's, goodness. It's, it's wonderful and it's incredible at the same time seeing them. Sometimes I don't even recognize them. They <laughs> recognize me. Well, th these are grown up kids with and everything and I'm like and I see them smiling and I say Miss Jackie and I'm like who is this <laughs> and they say well remember and then they start like taking out the sunglasses and I'm like it's such a I'm like oh, oh my, my gosh <laughs> yes. it's a guy in there <laughs> they start <laughs> laughing because Miss Jackie I'm like I'm sorry I, can see? I still see you the kid that's how long you've been doing this <laughs> that's how long you've been doing this but it's so nice, and it says so much about how seen and appreciated uh, these families uh, feel that, you know, over the years, they still reach out to you. And in the middle of the pandemic, they did so, too, Yeah. even during their pains. And we talked about, well, you and I privately, about how many pains and losses and the grief we have all experienced in, in, in different ways. And um, and and you uh, suffered quite a bit in this pandemic, and still were in this role of supporting others. It was a difficult time. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was very. Should flu. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was. It was hard. It was really hard. And just like you say, yeah, I, I, I kept on helping. Uh, I remember, well, as you know, Alex Migordis, my husband, uh, yeah, he got COVID. Actually, we all got COVID right mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving. And then all of a sudden he, he was getting worse. And I said, honey, I'm just calling the ambulance because, you, I mean, this is not working. And the typical thing, because Gordis had diabetes, he got several things, I mean, through mm -hmm. 28 years that we were together. I mean, I was used to like taking care, we would go to the hospital, take care of him and then come back. So for me, it was that was a, like a routine type of thing. So I remember that they, they took him in the ambulance and I, I immediately said, okay, see you, see you soon, hon. <laughs> see you soon, hon. And he, he just looked at me like his eyes were like, and I said, okay, let's just continue on. And they keep on calling because there were so many cases. I mean, the hospital was packed everywhere and that's and that's what at the same time i was like oh my gosh how many people are going through so many things mm -hmm. and it, in my case i mean it was 10 days honey left in the ambulance and 10 days after he passed away when the doctor called me i mean y that the process how they will handle the whole thing and i'm like okay every single day the suffering of how many more things were coming up to him and as, as you know, Alex, he was a strong guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he could he could handle. I mean, he had that, that personality that he could handle. And then getting the phone call from the doctor every single day, how it was getting worse and worse and more things were coming up. And for me, going through that pain, I mean, it, it, was, it was hard. But like uh, at the same time, I was like, okay, God, I mean, what do I need to learn? Mm. What do I do? I mean, and, and at the same time, I was taking care of my mom, so I couldn't cry in front of my mom. I had to hold everything. So I was like, okay, I mean, I just go on my knees and just just let me know what to do. I mean, just just there. I mean, I, I, I'm here for you, and whatever it is, I mean, I know that you're going to teach me and let me know what to do. When the doctor called me that he was going to be disconnected, I was like, okay, this is it. 
This is it. I'm not going to see him anymore. And at the same time, I had to contact his kids because his kids were in Costa Rica. I mean, we, I had like a whole chain of uh, through WhatsApp letting everybody know every single day. And I remember like a day or two days before, I'm like, I'm not going to see him. Let me just call him. I mean, like we like we will do it spiritually. Uh, and, I, and it just went home, I remember. And, and I said, Honey, I need you here to be with me. I know your spirit can come. I'm calling your spirit. Honey, we need to say goodbye. Because the doctor kept on telling me he's suffering. It seems that he is, he needs to come back to do something. Mm -hmm. And he, he's not going to be able to come back, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Those are hard words to hear, yes. to say the least. Yes, because like he said, based on what he went through in three days, three top four they die because he had to have a surgery in his stomach too hmm. and then all of a sudden everything collapsed and i just said i'm just calling his spirit and i'm gonna talk to him to go in peace and i pretty much told him i said honey you know what i love you i love you and i, I forgive myself and i forgive you because we're going through all of this and whatever it is I know that in spirit you're going to guide me. And I know that the tools are going to come and, uh, uh, and I just have to handle it. But please go in peace. Just go in peace, honey. Mm. That was one of the hardest things and at the same time the most peaceful thing that I ever did. Because after that, I actually felt him that he was like supporting him, supported me. Mm. Because I pretty much told him, send me the tools of what do I need to do? Because I didn't know anything. I mean, I didn't have anything. Uh, it's too much. Too much. Too much. And, and so suddenly and... Yeah, it's like, uh, how can you bear with all of that? I mean, it was like... <laughs> and then yeah. when they called me, th that was... I mean, right now I'm like, oh gosh, how did I handle that? They called me, they were gonna disconnect it, and I'm like, do you have all the funeral, like all the things for... And I'm like... I don't have anything. Immediately, I had to like just go online and check. Okay, what do I do? Call, call the. Uh, I mean, prices were like skyrocketing. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. Mm. I mean, how am I going to be doing? Thank God, I found something for cremation, which they were amazing how they handle everything. So supportive and so without even knowing me or anything, they handle everything. So I was like, okay, that's done. And then one month, and that's that's how fragile everything is right because i'm like oh gosh i mean okay i i made peace i i give him love i know that that i love him i already told him and then a month after pr probably two months after they sent me a little box and this is it here are the ashes <sighs> that, that was another one really really hard I actually kept his ashes because I couldn't do that. I, I had to do everything little by little because there yeah. was no money, there were no plans, there was, there were, there was nothing done. Mm -hmm. Thank God I could have done the cremation, and after that, I mean, Alex had just bought a, a, a mobile home, and we didn't have a, a insurance or anything to protect anything. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave everything. I mean, all of a sudden, um, of having a home, I became homeless. I was like. Ooh, and now? <laughs> and now what? <laughs> mm. And now? And then you're like, okay, here I have a three-bedroom, two-bedroom house with everything furnished and everything, and now, and the bank keep on pushing you. They say, you need to empty and you need to leave the house now. Mm. And, okay, social media, come and get everything. Just give everything for free, because who's going to buy it? I mean, the whole world was going through so much pain with so many losses. Who's going to come and buy things? Okay. I mean, just empty it, empty it. And then that's how I know how miracles happen because people that I didn't know came. And like a realtor brought me a letter, which that, thanks to that letter, it's the figures of the letter made it sound really nice. And they gave me a, a senior apartment where I could live, which thank God. 
Thank I was able goodness. to grab four things, and I'm like, okay, I have a place now where to live. Where to live. I'm like, and okay. take care of mom. Yeah. Because my mom, the right. first thing that the manager said, you cannot come to live over here. I'm just letting you know. I'm like, shoot, and you're called a friend. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm like, okay, don't worry. I mean, I know that guy will be taking care of me, and I know that people are going to, uh, something is going to come up. Mm -hmm. And it's something is going to come up. Mm -hmm. Something that you and I have talked about many times is how amazing it is. You know, all the love that you've poured into advocating for families and children and communities, you know, what we, what we give returns. Mm -hmm. There's that resonance. Mm -hmm. And it was evident when you were going through such a painful time in, in, in your life because the 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 help showed up yes it yes. showed up and it's not surprising it's not surprising how wonderful how wonderful that you say like that yeah it's true it's true it 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 was just amazing it, it was just i mean i was in tears all the time of all the emotion of of all the help that i got mm -hmm. i mean uh, one of the teachers came with some funds that they oh gosh they brought it to me from all the teachers, all the stuff. From the teachers. And and the my, I mean, it was so amazing. The city mm -hmm. approached me to see how, I, how they could help me. Uh, people that I had helped that they were in Vegas, they sent me checks, they sent me money. I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, it was from different, like the parents would see me in the parking lot or in the market and they would just approach me and give me some money. I mean, if this could help you, I mean, no, that it's not much, but it's something, Jackie. Love. The, oh, my gosh. Love. It, was, it was so wonderful. Love, love. This is what happens when you give love so abundantly. You live love. You live love. Yes. <laughs> you live love. Yes, that definitely. Uh, and, and uh, yeah. I'm grateful that for that because really the moment that I found that love can actually do everything mm -hmm. and that it transformed my life mm -hmm. and that's why I decided to change my life and do everything that I do to serve and do everything in the name of yeah. love because yeah. I know that it's healing, I know that it helps, yeah. I know that transforms, that it makes so many changes in people's it lives does. that I mean, I'm like, that's the only way. That's it, <laughs> that's it. If that, if that, if we let that be the guiding, you know, source. Yes. Love. Definitely. Yes. You've enriched my life. Mm -hmm. You have enriched my life. And I'm so thankful for that moment that we met. Oh, I'm so thankful to you. Help us so much. So much. I mean, yeah. I'm so thankful. I'm from the community and from every, from my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're a blessing. You are a blessing. Well, so happy. We reflect each other. Definitely. We <laughs> reflect each other. Wow. Well, I want to thank you, Jackie. And I would love to thank everyone who took time to, to watch, to listen to us. And uh, hopefully these re reflections add well to yours. And... Uh, May we continue transforming the world through reflections. Thank you.